My next uh, speaker is uh, Professor Jawad, who is the consultant rheumatologist. And as you know, Suhail has mentioned, he's International Medical Director of Royal College of Physicians. Could you please warmly welcome the chair and the next question. Thank you very much. Uh, Salaamu Alaikum. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will try and be quick because I'm sure you're all hungry. And uh, I mean, certainly one of my daughters, when she is hungry, she becomes aggressive. So <laughs> it's uh, from the hypoglycemia. So I will be quick. In fact, we started with, with Magdi's uh, excellent uh, uh, introduction and lecture. And in fact, I'll finish on the same, on the same theme. Uh, by the way, Professor Magdi Yaqub is our specialist advisor uh, uh, on Pakistan, for Pakistan at the Royal College of Physicians. And he is the first SPAD that's his, the, the, the term SPAD. So he's the first SPAD special advisor. In fact, uh, ministers have SPADs. So there, there you are, uh, Magdi. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the, I, am, uh, I work at, with Magdi at the William Harvey Research Institute at Barts on the London, but I'm also an NHS consultant and I'm the Hans Sloan Fellow of the College of Physicians. I have nothing to else to declare. This is, this is really, in a way, uh, the aim of this uh, talk is to, is, is to look at the musculoskeletal manifestations of diabetes and how to diagnose them and how to uh, manage them. And as we have heard, diabetes is extremely common. Millions of, millions of people, I mean, I think it's, our, we work in sub-Saharan Africa and uh, Obviously, at the start, we used to concentrate on communicable diseases, and now uh, we are increasing doing, uh, working on non-communicable diseases, because again, I think the epidemic has even reached sub-Saharan uh, uh, Africa. Uh, just to remind you that type 2 diabetes uh, is characterized by variable degrees of uh, insulin resistance and deficiency, but type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune uh, disease which leads to the destruction of the insulin-producing beta cells. And there is evidence that type 1 diabetes is increasing at the rate of about 4% a year, in, certainly in, in developing countries. And uh, currently, 1 in 11 adults have diabetes. In 2040, it's projected that 1 in 10. And as we heard, the law of halves uh, does apply to diabetes uh, as well, and half of the patients who have diabetes do not know that they have diabetes. Uh, sorry. What have I done? Okay, sorry. Um, maybe just that. And although, as, as we know that blindness, uh, kidney disease, kidney failure, uh, ischemic heart disease and peripheral vascular disease are really the main causes of uh, morbidity and premature mortality in, in patients with diabetes. However, it is much well uh, uh, less widely known that diabetes is associated with a number of musculoskeletal conditions which occur in, in those patients more commonly and it adds to the, uh, to the, to the morbidity. Uh, and some of them, some of these diseases are really common, uh, are not uh, in a way uh, restricted to diabetes, but very much age-related uh, and smoking-related. Uh, however, there are other musculoskeletal problems which are specific for for diabetes. Uh, so so it's, there's a combination uh, of the two. And in addition, some of these conditions arise from the complications of diabetes, such as peripheral neuropathy. Uh, while, while others are really caused by the metabolic abnormality, uh, mainly the glucosylation, which is damaging tissues. Uh, I mean, as I said, the problem, although they are rarely life-threatening, but they tend to occur in patients with life-threatening uh, complications of diabetes. And here is listed really the, the main group, uh, the neuroarthropathy, uh, and uh, I'll mention briefly uh, the, uh, if the relation between rheumatoid and diabetes type 1, gout, uh, RSD, or as it's known now, chronic uh, regional pain syndrome type 1, bone fragility, not osteoporosis, but bone fragility, DISH, and then diabetic uh, muscle infarction and the fibrosing syndromes. You could say, what are these fibrosing syndromes? The fibrosing syndromes are six 
frozen shoulder, diabetic frozen shoulder, carpal tunnel syndrome, Duputrin's contracture, de Quervain's uh, uh, tenosynovitis, synovitis, uh, the trigger finger, which is uh, flexor tenosynovitis, and the chiroarthropathy or the limited joint mobility in, in diabetes. So quickly on, in, on uh, diabetic, on neuroarthropathy, yeah, you have to remember that if you have a peripheral sensory neuropathy, this would lead to ulcerations. And if there is motor neuropathy, you will get wasting of the intrinsic muscles. So you end up with uh, claw uh, feet, claw to uh, uh, deformity, and that really adds to producing pressure and maybe to more ulceration. Callus may develop because the arches drop. But the most really significant uh, complication of diabetes, diabetic neuropathy is Charcot neuropathy. And it was first described by this celebrated uh, 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 Charcot, a Frenchman, who gave details of, uh, of this condition in patients who were suffering with syphilis. But unlike uh, diabetes, syphilis affects the knees mainly, while, uh, while uh, uh, in diabetes, the main joint affected is, is the ankle. And the reason for that, it's really because there is disturbance of the sympathetic nervous system, increased blood flow, and there is increased osteoclastic activity, and bone fatigue, resorption, and disorganization. Uh, and there is a good example for you, and it's usually the ankle, but the MTPJs may be affected, or the mid-tarsal and that distribution, and it's mainly the ankle. And you could see that really, it progresses very rapidly, there is, bone resorption of the subchondral bone, fragmentation, and ultimately the cartilage will be destroyed and there will be loose bodies embedded in the synovial tissue and the bone looked very sclerotic. This is from one of our patients, 67 year old, with diabetic neuroarthropathy and you can see the fragmentation, the bone resorption, the disorganization. To remember the features, uh, I, I, I'll say the six Ds of Charcot, and that is increased bone density, debris, dislocation, disorganization, distension, and destruction. So all the Ds, you can see the, the arch has fallen, and you can see the amount of bone resorption. Uh, uh, and it, it is a quite a serious condition. And uh, it is probably uh, thought that the advanced leucalation end products, what we call uh, uh, age, uh, binding to, to the receptors, and they seem to be the cause uh, of this. They tend to uh, upregulate the matrix metalloproteinases, which are involved in inflammation. In fact, we have found in lupus uh, that the RAGE uh, uh, products seem to be also the cause of accelerated atherosclerosis uh, in, in our patients. And management, very difficult, very difficult indeed. Perhaps the best thing you could do is fit them with a, with a baloney air cast because that uh, may reduce the swelling and the edema and keep the patient going. Uh, surgery is best avoided and there is no point in giving bisphosphonates because they do not work. Uh, now, now gout, uh, patients with, even if you exclude all confounding factors, type 2 diabetes is more common uh, in gout. Uh, now, with rheumatoid arthritis, the association is really very restricted to type 1 diabetes and those who are AC uh, anti-citrullinated peptides, antibody positive, and possibly because they share that allele with these patients. Uh, I, I'm going very quick. As well. And this is limited joint mobility is very common. As I will say, the prior, the, uh, they have a positive prior sign or as in India I used to say, the positive Hindu greeting sign. Uh, and uh, and it, it resembles, uh, it resembles uh, scleroderma. And, and in fact, it does occur in patients without diabetes. Elderly patients who smoke uh, tend to get, uh, to get the, uh, this condition. And its incidence is variable. It occurs in type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And as I said, it increases with age. Uh, uh, and uh, cigarette smoking. And uh, you could also do the, uh, the sign if you just place the hand on the table and if it doesn't fly straight, that is also called the, top, the positive table top signs. And what is the cause? Glucosylation of the collagen fibers, uh, increased 
in fact, the, the, co the collagen attracts more water and it becomes less uh, useful. The, obviously, the uh, reduce the blood supply, the uh, neuropathy and the disuse all adds into the process. The, the good news is that this condition does improve with time. So, but what you really need, you need to, uh, obviously better control of the diabetes, but if cessation of smoking, if, if you could convince them, but stretching, stretching is very important. It's one of the few conditions that really does improve with time. Now the frozen shoulder, the difference between uh, a diabetic frozen shoulder and uh, uh, the classic frozen shoulder, that classic frozen shoulder never occurs before the age of 40. If you see a 25-year-old, and I work in the East End of London, and 30% of our population are, are of Mongolia origin, and 40% develop diabetes by the age of 40. And if I see a patient with a frozen shoulder who is in his 20s or 30s, I check the urine. Every year, I find one or two cases. You diagnose them through a frozen shoulder. The difference between the classic frozen shoulder, the other difference is, is pain is less an issue in diabetes. It is because it arises very, the onset is gradual, unlike the classic frozen shoulder. Uh, and generally, they don't respond to a steroid injection. What they need to be, they need to be whacked, stretched. Uh, uh, and carpal tunnel syndrome, very common. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in diabetics, uh, even in the, in the uh, absence of peripheral sensory neuropathy. And these patients are worth decompressing. The way you diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome is painful pins and needles at night. It's, nectur it's, it's nocturnal pins and needles in the hand. And obviously you could do the phalan signs and the, and the, uh, uh, and the uh, Tinell sign. Now, trigger finger, again, why do you get a trigger finger? Because of the glucosylation of these collagen fibers. And a trigger finger, it's either the finger with a trigger, uh, first thing in the morning more likely, or it can get stuck. It can get stuck in flexion, or it could get stuck in extension. That's all. And generally, these patients do respond to a steroid injection, or uh, that you could decompress them surgically. Deputrin's contracture is the same. We have an, but this is now, it's not the deep flexor tendon, but rather the uh, palmar uh, fascia. Uh, and luckily now we have a collagenase injections. We inject them locally because the operation is, is really quite, uh, quite serious because you have to really cut deep and then uh, do a skin graft uh, in there. So it is, uh, it's common. The quill veins is, is similar. The way you diagnose, uh, it's usually they, they present with pain at the base of the thumb. The way to diagnose is the Finkelstein test. You put the thumb inside, uh, uh, inside your hand, make a fist on top of it, and just flex the, the wrist towards the ulnar side. And you can only do it once because it's very painful. Finkelstein test. Now, the effects on, uh, on bone, although there is, if you have hyperglycemia, you're going to lose calcium through the urine. Uh, but uh, there, is, there is a number of differences between type 1 and type 2, but I'm not going to go into a lot of details. But no matter what, w whether you are type 1 or type 2, you have an increased risk uh, of, uh, of fractures. So really, in a way, the bone density is less, is less important when it comes, uh, but it's the, it's the risk of fractures that is important. And there is, although you would expect people who are type 2 diabetes, as my mother would say, I am affluent looking, not fat. She told my wife that I am affluent looking. So, so anyway, like Steve uh, and maybe Magdi, we're all affluent looking uh, <laughs> rather than overweight. And, and uh, you, you could see that affluent looking is not, doesn't stop you getting, if you are diabetic, from breaking your bones. Uh, and you can see that the reason for that is because although the bone density may be normal, but in fact, is there is increased porosity and uh, both cortical and trabecular bone. And there is, this is a very good review for people who want, because that's another lecture. I, I think it's to look at the pathophysiology of bone fragility in patients with diabetes. Because as I said, the, the DEXA scan does not reflect uh, that. And increasingly, obviously, the falls, the peripheral neuropathy, the poor vision uh, adds in. 
And remember uh, with diabetes is that uh, the, th the thiazolidinitions can also cause uh, increased uh, fracture risk. Uh, 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 and uh, however, you don't really need to stop people from using them if they need them because they have osteoporosis. DISH is diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. Half of the patients with, uh, with this condition have, uh, have uh, diabetes. Uh, and uh, it, it, you have to have four consecutive bridging osteophytes on the right side of the dorsal spine because the, pulse, the pulsating heart uh, on the left side will prevent these bridging osteophytes from happening. And you can see that that's um, uh, patients with massive, this is not ankylosing spondylitis, this is DISH, diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. Uh, another complication which occasionally we see, this is uh, a recent patient, so a couple of months ago, they suddenly get infarction uh, in the muscle, uh, aseptic myelin necrosis, uh, and you don't need a biopsy because it shows very well on an MRI scan. Uh, and uh, be the best thing is to avoid really surgery, uh, and uh, generally, as far as you make the diagnosis, you may have to release the compartment. Uh, uh, if necessary. There is an increased, uh, 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 in fact, severity of, uh, 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 there is in increased uh, evidence that uh, osteoarthritis and uh, symptomatic OA is more common in patients with diabetes. This is a very a recent good paper which shows that people are interested. Just to, to conclude that I've described a number of these musculoskeletal uh, problems. They are easy to diagnose. They are easy to, in fact, some of them are easy to treat and may, in fact, lessen the burden of uh, morbidity in these uh, patients. But obviously, good control of diabetes, stopping smoking, stretching, and keeping as active as possible is the best prevention. Thank you. We just received a panic call from the lunch people. Um, I want to share that they have two, three minutes before the rapid hour. Uh, I'd like to take a few comments, uh, two comments from Professor Javed Akram and Professor Amir Rafur on the talk of uh, Professor uh, Ali Jawad, if I may please. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for um, moderating and uh, all the colleagues. Uh, it's a wonderful session, a uh, lot of uh, learning for all of us, uh, and especially I think uh, the group from Pakistan and the group from here. Uh, very, very appropriate talks, and I'm sure the way forward uh, we have to, uh, the future is very promising uh, for APPS under your leadership and all the colleagues there, and uh, we look forward. Uh, I'll suggest uh, that I think uh, APPS, obviously it's uh, in its infancy, but uh, has the right mix to take it forward. Uh, very similar to what APNA is doing, and I have a lot of experience with them, and. Uh, I think there should be one meeting in Pakistan and one here, maybe winter there and summer here, be something like that, uh, that would help. And um, the main thing is that all the lectures were of highest standard, uh, full of uh, the implementation uh, part is always harder, uh, that uh, how, what's the way forward. And I think uh, maybe next year uh, we will have that, that what we did last uh, year, how much of it has been implemented by whoever can implement. You see, uh, we're very much actionable points here, which we have noted down, and we'd like to collaborate further. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sohail. Uh, I have learned a lesson that you don't uh, comment on affluent people if you're poor like me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I have, you know, I mean, I won't say much, but uh, this is a joint effort, and we look forward to it. I think, you know, privately, if, because this we are running late. But we're desperate that APA's getting age. I've been in their executive council. Some of you have visited. Uh, and I think, as Javed says, uh, we have seniors who are dying of medicine, like Professor Daoud. It's very easy for you guys to join one of the specialty meetings. We get guests from all over. And that would be the way forward. Thank you very much. And the, the last concluding remarks from the, the chairman, if you may conclude the session for us, please. Uh, well, I think it's. I think it's been. Uh, it's been. A, I think a good morning. But very quickly, I think it's uh, uh, Captain Kirk or Professor Yakub <laughs> really alerted us. Uh, alerted us to 
to the problems of really chronic disease. And as I said, the impact of chronic disease is, is increasing, uh, even in places that are really uh, uh, in, in very developing. I mean, some of the countries, the total number of, uh, of physicians in, for example, East, Central, and Southern Africa, excluding South Africa, is, is around 900 physicians. There are only 900 physicians. The whole of Zanzibar has one physician, for example. But even in these diseases, in these countries, we're seeing increasing hypertension, diabetes, uh, ischemic heart disease, and, and so on. And people are less dying, dying less of infectious diseases. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I think uh, 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 Captain Crump, rather than Captain, it's, uh, 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 he's done a really excellent work. He, hasn't, he has visited Pakistan so many times that he has eroded my budget. And I had to find extra money to, to keep sending him. And he, and he has really spent time in, in, in villages, in rural areas. And he doesn't only, he doesn't uh, uh, really just go and see the bosses, but he has worked with local people. So I think, thank you, Steve for all your hard work. And uh, Liz, uh, Liz is, uh, in fact, she's an expert in evidence-based medicine, and uh, she's been working at the college for a long time. And she's, she's now concentrating on patient safety uh, with Mike Durkin. And, and, and uh, it is really important uh, that the principles of patient safety is to be transparent. Is to, if something goes wrong, tell patients that they have gone wrong. They are less likely to, co to, uh, to, 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 uh, to, uh, to, in a way, complain. Make it clear that you have made a mistake, you, you reflect, you bring people uh, around you, and you try and prevent that uh, uh, really mistake from happening. Uh, we saw, uh, we, uh, if at, uh, uh, Zafar was very impressive with her Sahat Kahani. I think it means the story of health, doesn't it? Uh, as far and uh, and really the work uh, they do is really uh, very impressive. And uh, and also we learned from Abdul Hafiz, uh, in a way, the recommendation of the APPS uh, for improving health, the quality of care in in Pakistan is very welcome. But you need two for tango. Uh, you can't really make recommendations and produce guidelines unless the other side wants them. So, I mean, I've been working in international uh, development for the last nine years, and projects only succeed if the other side wants to work with you. So I think really this is, and it, uh, it was heartening uh, to learn that already you've got a response to, uh, to what had been suggested. Uh, and. Well, I just told you about aches and pains, that's all. Uh, and you're all hungry. I think you've, you've earned your lunch. <laughs> but don't eat too much. Don't be affluent looking, as my mother said. <laughs> uh, take care. Thank you very much.